Continuing our discussion on simulating continuous random variables, uh, let's look at uh, the most important one of them all, the normal distribution. So how do we generate independent normal deviates, a sequence of uh, standard normals? So the first thing to note is that the normal CDF cannot be inverted in closed form. So uh, it's not the most efficient to use the uh, the inversion that we did for the exponential uh, in the previous slides. Uh, but there are other ways. We can obviously uh, invert the distribution, uh, the normal distribution. It's just going to take a little long. Uh, but there are other more elegant methods. So uh, we can we can, in fact, the one that I'm going to discuss at length is the box Muller transform, also known as the polar method. Uh, there are efficient methods like acceptance rejection uh, technique uh, from the Laplace distribution uh, and a few others. Uh, the MATLAB command is RANDN. So if you type RANDN, you get uh, a standard normal deviate. Uh, I'm not sure what the algorithm behind RANDN is, uh, but uh, we are going to use it um, extensively in our simulations. Uh, and then once we have uh, a standard normal deviate, uh, it's trivial to convert it to any arbitrary normal because we can always multiply uh, that, strong, that standard normal z uh, with sigma and add mu to that and we get a normal with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. So let's now uh, look into a little detail uh, at the Box-Muller transformation. Um, uh, so let's say we uh, we represent uh, two independent standard normals uh, z1 and z2 on the Cartesian plane and um, so we can uh, represent that with uh, in terms of polar coordinates uh, the radius r and the uh, angle theta. Um, so uh, with this map and inverse map, we can actually find out uh, the, the density, uh, the, the joint density of r and theta. Uh, the joint density of z1 and z2 is the bivariate normal with the bivariate standard normal with rho equals 0. So um, we can express f of r theta in terms of f of z, uh, um, z1, z2 and the Jacobian. Uh, the Jacobian is uh, simple uh, to compute. It's equal to r. So it's the radial distance. Uh, once we plug that in, uh, the joint density of r and theta uh, can be given in terms of uh, that of z1 and z2. And if we do the calculus, and we uh, integrate out r uh, from the joint density, so we would be left with the marginal density of theta. And likewise, we can do it uh, for the other variable, and we would be left with the marginal density of r. And clearly, uh, we end up with the uniform distribution for theta. So uh, if, uh, r, uh, if z1 and z2 are standard independent standard normals, uh, then uh, the angle thus formed uh, is uniform between 0 and 2 pi and uh, the radius thus formed is Rayleigh distributed uh, or r square uh, is chi squared with 2 degrees of freedom. So this uh, is quite powerful and more so because uh, we clearly see that uh, f theta times fr is actually fr theta so r and theta are independent. Uh, so uh, now we have uh, a means of uh, generating r and theta. If we could do it uh, efficiently, then we have a clear way of uh, getting z1 and z2 from them without the need for uh, inverting the normal distribution function. Uh, so uh, that's exactly uh, what we will do. Uh, so here uh, we have uh, Z1 and Z2 in terms of uh, 
U1 and U2. The first uh, U, the U1 is used to generate uh, the Rayleigh random variable uh, and the second U, U2, is used to generate the angle. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, look at uh, uh, just an implementation with, uh, uh, with the MATLAB code. So uh, R, as I said, uh, is Rayleigh with the mean of root of pi by 2 and theta is uniform between 0 and 2 pi. Uh, and we are going to use the, the polar representation for Z1 and Z2. So uh, this would be the code, uh, the little snippet of MATLAB code. Uh, we generate theta uniformly between 0 and 2 pi. So the rand multiplied by 2 pi would give me that. Uh, then we generate uh, the radius, which is the Rayleigh random variable, and that's using uh, the transformation of another rand. Uh, here I have used 1 minus rand as the same as rand. They're identically distributed. Uh, so that gives those theta and r pair uh, that gives us uh, the x and y coordinates, which would be uh, actually z1 and z2. Uh, so this is what 10,000 samples of this uh, process would look like on the uh, z1, z2 plane. Uh, clearly, you know, we can get an idea, get a sense that this is looking at the normal uh, the standard normal dome uh, that we have seen before uh, from the top. So it's most dense near the origin and becomes less and less dense as uh, we move away from the, the origin, the mean, the mode. Uh, and uh, if we want to find uh, the statistics of these 10,000 samples, uh, clearly we are getting something uh, close to the theoretical values. Uh, the means of Z1 and Z2 are close to zero. Uh, the variance uh, are uh, each close to one, and the correlation coefficient uh, is pretty small uh, and close to the ideal value of zero uh, that uh, we should expect.